Welcome to this week's The Choice. And folks, here's the deal. If you're not from way up north, like none of it, and you get one of these on your trail camera photos, you better call the Division of Wildlife because something ain't right. Something's wrong. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, this week, Freddie and Russ are heading up north with Weber's Lodge up to Nunavut, right. Baker's Lake. They're going to go hunt muskox. Muskox. It's cold. It's snowy. It's got these big fluffy animals there that kind of resemble Freddy's beard. Yeah, you know, they sort of look like. Yeah, it's a little things. You know, I mean, you and I, we did this, gosh, 10 something years ago. Okay. This happens to be mine because it was the bigger one. You know, I'm just saying. This week's lucky logo was Hunter Safety Systems. Hey, all kidding aside, folks, please, if you're climbing in any type of tree stand or ladder stand, always stay connected. Absolutely. So watch for that logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. So, should we head north? Yeah, let's head north because I mean, can't get these south, Vic. You know, I think Freddie, this might be from his ancestors. Okay, ancestors, I thought you were going to say like his aunt. I that didn't say that. That would be bad. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So back in February, we're at the Harrisburg Show in Pennsylvania. And we're there with Russ, and wouldn't you know it, Russ and Ralph come up to me and ask if I wouldn't like to go on a muskox hunt. We decided that we'd take uh, Freddie along with us and see if we can put him through the, the abuse of the tundra. And of course, <laughs> I said yes, I'm certainly not going to say no to a lifelong dream, an adventure that I can't even imagine how many times I've thought of. When I knew the hunt was going to happen, I started physically preparing myself for and mentally preparing myself for because it's something that you have to go into with the mindset of survival. It was something that I started thinking of and preparing for and uh, mentally and physically both. You know, you're heading up to an environment that's harsh. Uh, harsh is probably even an understatement. So once Freddie committed, uh, I decided I'd jump in as a posse member and cameraman. We're good to go. And also being part of the operation, I wanted to have first-hand knowledge so I could be comfortable telling hunters exactly what to expect when we get up there. Got some time to kill, got flown in, got checked into the hotel. We came to check out the Winnipeg uh, Cabela's. Why not, right? Nothing better to do. Got a few things to pick up, probably some hand warmers because we are heading to the Arctic. So uh, just want to make sure that we have stuff uh, some minor things that in case something goes wrong, we're ready uh, to replace it right away. So just gonna grab a couple things while we're here before we get up into the Arctic to make sure that we are 100% covered for the muskox hunt of a lifetime. I see snowmobile helmets. I'd like to have a pair of goggles. After Cabela's, we headed out to the airport. Uh, you get an early morning flight from Winnipeg to Churchill. We just landed in Churchill. We've got about a half hour layover before we jump on the same plane to get to Rankin. Uh, it's about minus 12 Celsius here. Uh, Freddie says in Fahrenheit, that's really cold. Fahrenheit, Celsius, it's cold already. <laughs> but it don't matter, because in a few hours, we're gonna be in Baker Lake, getting ready to go kill a muskox. <laughs> Then you go from Churchill to Rankin Inlet, and then finally Rankin Inlet to Baker Lake. Well, we are up here in the Arctic. Baker Lake Nunavut with Weber's Lodge. A little bit south of the Arctic Circle. We were pretty much blizzard condition, white out condition, snowed in all day. Pretty much what we expected coming up here. I mean, we are in the Arctic, so we knew that the weather was gonna be pretty extreme. Now that the weather's broke a little bit, it looks like it's gonna be a beautiful night. Very, very unique way of life up here. Snowmobiles, going three deep on a snowmobile, a baby on her back and another kid behind her. It's how they roll up here in Baker Lake. Up here, Baker Lake, Nunavut with Weber's Lodge breakfast. Here come the ladies with our meals now. Get our bellies full and go after the muskox. The hunting itself takes place outside the community of Baker Lake. Uh, you will be expected to drive a snow machine approximately 25 to 35 miles one way to get into the muskox area, but when you do, it is completely worth it. We are about 75 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Weather can change on the drop of a dime. Uh, which we experienced while we were there this week. Uh, weather's much better today. We're getting some squalls going through, but 
We're in the muskox area now. We just stopped for lunch. Gonna wait a little while and then uh, start looking for the groups of muskox. The plan is to get on some of these high ridges and uh, see as far as we can see. Hopefully the wind dies down a little bit and the snow stops. That'll help us. Nice cold lunch on the tundra. We haven't seen a muskox yet, but I'm pretty sure I saw a couple tauntauns go flying by as we were driving through. <laughs> we're up here at Weber's Lodge on the adventure of my lifetime. We're up here hunting muskox in a sea of white. Once you see some muskox, what you and your guide are going to do is you're going to work your way in to get to a position where you can glass them enough to judge them. And if there's a quality bull in there that you and your guide decide is one that you want to take, it's off the machines and it's a slow, steady, patient stock in on these animals. We got the Hoyt already, and uh, we're going to go see if we can't find a bull in this group that's beard worthy. So again, just in case anybody forgot, the whole concept behind the facial hair, right, was the Booner beard. I had to film a Booner or kill a Booner myself on film and the beard goes. So the goal, hopefully, good Lord willing, is we find one up here that we think could go boon or pretty close, and maybe, just maybe, I'll leave a little bit of the beard here on the Arctic tundra. <laughs> so we did try a little bit with the bow, and so the musk ox were really skittish. They didn't want to be pushed around too much. I tried with the bow, but hey, I'm a hunter. Plain and simple, I'm a hunter. We decided that it was time for the Thompson Center to do its work. Uh, it didn't take long on the, on the day that we started hunting for, for us to find a great group. Uh, we needed to find a bull that was beard worthy, so it was a little, uh, a little dicey because you don't see a lot of muskox, so field judging them, it takes some time. So we decided to put the bow away, got to within range of the rifle, the old TC-308, our buddy Luke's gun, and got to within about 100 yards of that big old bull that Russ thought was beard worthy. Put the TC on the bog pod, and the first bullet I touched off, and you could hear that bullet hit him. Crap. You hit him. And I came a long way, so I jacked another one in the chamber. He was still standing there, good broadside shot. Put the crosshairs right on the shoulder. There, he got him. Hammered him again, and he hit the deck. There he goes, he's going down, baby. Woo! <laughs> we have. A muskox down in Baker Lake, Nunavut, brother man. Give me love. Thank you very much, Weber's Lodges. Oh, what a dream come true. Gun safe, magazines dropped. Let's go put my hands on my first muskox. <laughs> this is cool. Everybody knows Freddie is the emotional guy. And I'm okay with that because I've got to live a lot of dreams doing this job. And again, the emotions overcame me. I got up to this animal that made the whole world look small at that point. Oh boy. <laughs> All that was going on right then was me and my muskox. I'm very blessed to be sitting here right now. So, oh, excuse me if I get a little emotional. Ugh. We got out this morning. We're about a two hour ride from camp on the snow machines. Got to the top of the ridge over there and spotted this bull amongst the herd of muskox. There was probably 40 or 50 in the herd. We collectively as a group seemed to think that this guy was probably the biggest in the group. So we picked him out, set our sights on him. We were able to close the distance to about 110 yards and the old TC-308 barked and put him right down. Couple shots right behind the shoulder. He went about 10 yards and piled up. Again, I gotta say thanks to Ralph and Vicky for helping me live another dream. Russ and everybody here at Baker Lake, Nunavut, and Weber's Lodges, all the great guides. And of course, good Lord above for blessing me with another amazing, amazing creature. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we're gonna go same area as we went yesterday. And then we're loading up right now. We got the sleeping bag and whatever extra clothes we need for food, rifles, and uh, we got the tarp, got extra gas. These are our two herds of at least 70 or so. Okay. So we're gonna go check those out. They're a little bit further down where we were, but we're gonna go check those out today. Awesome. Look forward to it. All right, start packing up and head out. 
you're going to be riding between 25 and 35 miles into the area where the muskox are, you will more than likely lose a day, maybe more, to weather. That's the just the nature of the beast up on Arctic hunting. So there's going to be two guides, two hunters. One of the guides will have a comet to complete with everything you need to spend a night out on the tundra. You've got everything you need. You're going to survive and a certain amount of comfort will be provided. But we take all the precautions so that that doesn't happen. Uh, once we got into their area, uh, then you're going to get close enough that you can start glassing them. One thing you'll notice up in this area, you can see a group of muskox and it could be five to seven miles away depending on what ridge, where your position is and where they are. They really stand out against the snow. So Jason, we, uh, we saw these bulls from a long way off. We've been trying to work in on them. You can see they're just moseying on over the ridge now. We're gonna wait for them to go over the ridge before we chase them, but can you explain sort of what they've been trying to do here? Um, it looks like they found a spot where there's not much snow and easy, easy digging. And what they do is they get clear the snow out of there and they go for this what we call a lichen this yellow yellow greenish stuff and that's what they are mostly feed on so you're saying a 600 plus pound animal living in these conditions is digging around and eating these little twigs yeah and it takes years for this to grow as well well that's the thing it's not like uh, every year a wheat field fills up and years. how long do you think freddie would survive eating just that Oh. Not long. Three, Three days. <laughs> Once we located the herd, we got close enough to, to make sound judgment on, on if there was a bull that we wanted to go after in there. We're going to start walking in now. They've uh, fallen asleep while we've been watching them. And we're going to see how close we can get and how big they are. When we originally located them, two of them were bedded. Uh, by the time we had decided to, uh, to go after them and worked our way in, two of them were lying completely on their side, uh, completely relaxed. So we made the uh, most of our opportunity and got in uh, to around 400 yards. I still wasn't comfortable with that range. We moved in a little further. They spooked, but they didn't run too far. We just held tight, didn't move. Once they started feeding, we slowly moved in again, got to under 300 yards, about 285, I think Fred was yelling out ranges to me. I felt comfortable, I put the crossers on the bull. Uh, my first shot looked awesome, uh, but these are big critters and uh, they can soak up a lot. So I jacked another round in the 308, let the TC bark another time and the, that shot put him down. There, Thank you, Jason. Thank you very Jason. much, man. All right. Freddy. <laughs> Hang down. Glad you could out. <laughs> Glad I could share it with you, man. That was a stock. We closed the distance to about 285. Man, they, they laid right back down. We just held tight and stood still. So now we've got one long walk back to get the sleds, and I think we got one 300-yard walk to see my uh, my muskox bull. As I walked up to the bull, there was a couple of things that uh, that I noticed. Uh, his horns were massive, which is great. Uh, they also weren't quite as white as Freddy's or the other guys. Uh, they hadn't grown together like a real mature bull's boss does, uh, but all in all, he was my bull. Weber's Lodges and Hennick Lake Adventures are working together to put on some exciting northern adventure tours and hunts, and this is one of them. We just, a slow, deliberate stalk, and we got within under 300 yards, squeezed the trigger, ended up with an incredible animal, an incredible representation of what it takes to live up here between the fur and their big hooves for pawing through this rock hard snow. Front to back, it's one of the most incredible creatures in North America. And uh, I'm proud to take this one home. We're gonna be skinning them out and getting all this delicious meat back to the community. I'm gonna take some home so I can feed my friends and family, but the rest I'm gonna leave up here with the people uh, to divvy up and share with each other. Thanks again to Weber's Lodges for letting me come up here and do this. Thanks for letting uh, let me share it with you guys, Ralph and Vicky. Thanks, Freddie, for tagging along, being a good friend. And thank you, Jason, for all the work you're about to do. I appreciate you, man. We got everything loaded on the common tick. We started following Jason out, and the fog rolled in. It was so thick that we were riding roughly 10 yards apart, 20 yards apart on our sleds on the way back. And then the fog started freezing. It was crystallizing in the air. It was covering our machines. It was covering the windshields. Our goggles were covered in frost. It turned a two and a half hour ride into a three and a half hour ride back home. We actually got to a point where we wanted to confirm where we were. 
with the GPS because we knew we were close to town and we turned off the machines, turned on the GPS and a dog started barking so we knew we were close to town. Sure enough, we were within about half a mile, three quarter mile and uh, we worked our way up to town, got the bull and the meat to the guide's house and went in for another hot shower and, and a good supper. The purpose of us being here this evening in the freezing cold is to see if this musk ox that Freddy Lago shot is beard worthy. There's only five measurements and we're only doing a rough score so anybody who's an official scorer out there just take a deep breath. I just want to get it close to see if we should warm up the razors. 24 and a half. I give that one nine and a half. Getting nervous Fred? I'm getting there. We knew he was big. Uh, Russ thought he was beard worthy. Size really didn't matter. Don't get me wrong. I was looking forward to finding out the score of this bull. Yeah, one more measurement. And the total's at 102 and three quarters right now. So as long as this circumference isn't two and a quarter inches, you can keep your beard, buddy. Six oh. and a quarter. So a real rough green score of 109 inches, which is four inches past beard worthy. I'm confident to say Freddie's returning home clean as a baby. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. <laughs> Five years, nine months into making, the Booner beard has lived and died. And now she dies. I gotta be honest, I'm not happy about it. But no worries, because with the end of one beard, begins another. <laughs> Thank you a lot, man. I appreciate that. That's a huge bull. Thank you. Well, it's part of the deal. And now the beard must go. It's been a good ride, and I'm sad to lose it. But no worries. With the end of one beard begins the next beard. So, very happy to have a Boone and Crockett animal on the ground. It's the Booner beard. She's gotta go, it's part of the deal. You know you're a real man when you have to use a set of hair trimmers to trim your facial hair. So take that. <laughs> now, to get on the plane, head back home, Hopefully I don't run into any issues at the border for looking completely different than I did when I entered and get the reaction of my girls, which I have a feeling is probably gonna end up being negative. <laughs> that is what the choice is all about. Congratulations, Congratulations Freddie, Russ, and I mean, what an adventure. I mean, you guys, you each shot Booners, and speaking of Booners. Here's the funny part. Years and years ago, Freddie made a little bet in the office yeah, and it stuck. He did which it, is not us. It wasn't us. No. And he said if he ever films one of us right, or, or he shoots an animal that makes Boone and Crockett, right. he's going to shave his beard. Well, guess what? That footage is hysterical and now he looks like a little baby. Fred, I know <laughs> that you need to grow that beard. You and do the way you do it, back. you'll probably have that like, thing back in like two days. Before he even gets home. Yeah, you know? I mean, this week's be... lucky logo was Hunter Safety Systems. Folks, all kidding aside, if you're going up in any type of stand, please, please, for your family, for your loved ones, always stay connected. Always stay connected from the ground up. If you saw the Hunter Safety System logo, you need to log on to choicetv.com, click on the lucky logo button, fill out some all information, cool and someone's going to get a Hunter Safety System yes. harness, plus a whole bunch of other great stuff. We want to thank you guys for making your choice. The choice. And we'll see you next week, but I do have a suggestion what? for Freddie. He could use my musk ox here, because this would be mine, you know. He could use it as a beard, and you could keep your face warm. It looks like Fred. It does look like Freddie. Yeah. Do I look like Freddie now? Err. Oh, 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 oh. That's hysterical. Start crying. Start crying. <laughs> <laughs>